Hi and welcome back to Mrs Collinson's Geography Classroom. Uh, we're continuing with our topic all about Nigeria. We are now on lesson four. In your booklets it will say lesson three because I split up, uh, I think it was lesson two. So you're now on page 11 to 13 and we're going to be looking at Nigeria's industries. We're looking at the idea of it having a balanced industry and what I mean by industry is what kind of jobs do people have? Now before we start there are four kind of jobs or industries that you need to know about. The first one is primary and you've got secondary, tertiary and quaternary and I'm just going to write some of the definitions up here. So primary are any jobs related to um, getting something from the ground. So that could be farming, it could be fishing and it's very low paid. So it's a low paid job and um, you wouldn't normally want a primary job if you want to make the money. Then you've got secondary. Secondary is slightly better paid, you need some skills and it's essentially making something out of what was taken in the ground. So we call that manufacturing. So making things, making something. So that could be um, working in a factory, it could be making a building a car. It's not the designing, it's the literal physical building and making of something. Then you've got ter tertiary. So tertiary is even better paid. Uh, that is where you usually need a degree. You need to have skills to be trained quite highly. And that is services, where you provide a service for somebody else. So a bus driver provides a service. Um, a teacher, myself, I'm, a, I'm providing a service for you. A lawyer, a doctor, usually quite highly paid. And the last one is quaternary. Now quaternary is what you'd only really find in a HIC country, a really high income country. And quaternary is the thinking of new ideas, coming up with new things. So working for Apple or Google or Microsoft and coming up with new web designs or a designer of a car or um, literally inventing something new, a scientist that develops new medicines or vaccines. So people working on the vaccination against the coronavirus, they're in the quaternary sector. So that is all about creation, creating something new. Ideally, you want to be in this quaternary sector. So when we're looking at Nigeria, we're going to be looking at three different areas to do with their industries. And it's all about how it's changed over time. So the first thing is what has changed? So we're going to look at what has changed. Let's split this into kind of three. What's changed? Why has it changed? And what impact has this got? What impact has these changes had on the economy? So first thing is what, what's changed? What's changed over time? So you might remember from a few lessons back something that happened in 1883. That was colonisation. So colonisation happens and at this point the economy or their industries was very unbalanced and the majority of people worked in the primary industry, mostly farming. So very unbalanced and mostly primary. Then by 1970, so 1970, um, well actually 1950, that was when they gained independence. And at that point, during this time of colonisation, when it was part of the British Empire, it balanced the economy. So it then had a balanced amount of jobs in primary, secondary and tertiary. They still don't have many quaternary, but it was a nice balance between the three. So they developed their manufacturing, so they're quite well known for making cars, and they developed their services. So we know that there's quite a large business and finance sector. So by this point, it was balanced between the 
between three industries, not really including quaternary. The main industries that it now relies on is three main industries. It's got one, fast food. The second one is fashion. So they do lots of fashion design, which we've mentioned before. And the last one is cosmetics. So cosmetics includes makeup, but it also includes like shampoos, soaps, things like that. So why, why have these changes taken place? Now, the, the main reason is actually technology. So naturally, over time, Nigeria, but the whole world has gotten better at technology. We've got more technology. We can have more factories because we can produce more machinery better and, and more cheaply. So one reason is tech, got better tech. Another reason is investment. There's been more money coming into Nigeria, mostly because of oil and the um, businesses to do with oil and shell coming in as a big business. So you've got more investment from overseas. You've also got through colonization, remember we talked about them setting up schools and therefore teaching people the English language. If you've got the majority of your population speaking English, you can therefore talk to a lot of other countries in that colony, in the British Empire, a lot easier. So you can trade more easily, you can make business deals more easily. So English language was a big reason for their growth. A, another reason was the finance market. So we've talked about them having better tech, but also there was a huge boom in finance as an industry. So that is another reason, is finances, an investment into finances. And the last one I would say is um, the movement of the, the green movement. And what I mean by that is the growth in knowledge of climate change, global warming, awareness about impact on the environment. So instead of just chopping down all their trees and using it for farming, they tried to look at other ways they could make money that was better for their environment. So they started moving to maybe they could make things instead. Maybe they could produce things or maybe they could just start to offer services to people. And that doesn't really impact the environment. So the last one is the green movement. So these are reasons why Nigeria's industries, their types of jobs, have changed over time. So what impact has this had? If you start to move away from just primary to secondary and tertiary, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to make more money. So as a result, Nigeria has gotten richer. So one impact, it's richer. Another impact, it's more connected. It's more connected to other countries through the British language. It's also got a broader influence. So this makes them more influential as a, com uh, as a country, more influential. You've also got more jobs. So not just more money, but more and better paid jobs. So more for more jobs. And if you've got more people being employed, if you've got more money, and something we're going to look at in a few lessons time, is you've got a better quality of life. And what I mean by that is you can have better houses, better food, education, maybe you live longer, things like that. So your quality of life, I'm just going to put Q-O-L, gets better, better quality of life. So. That was your lesson on Nigeria's changes in its industries. You've got the four different industries looking at what has changed over time, why it's changed and what impact this has had. In your booklets, there's going to be something on the a multiplier effect. Now, just very quickly, the multiplier effect is, imagine I've got a job. I've just received a new job. I might have um, started working at a shop. Therefore, I get a pay rise. I might have a salary. With my salary, I can therefore go to another shop and buy a week's worth of shopping that I might not have been able to do before. 
Therefore, that shop starts to grow and can employ more people. Somebody else gets employed. Somebody else then can spend that money in another shop. They can employ more people, etc. And that is the multiplier effect. When one thing you change or you invest, means that everyone else benefits from that cycle. So a key impact of Nigeria's changing industry is that once they've invested into these sectors, mostly tertiary, it creates a snowball effect for the rest of the economy and everyone else benefits. Hope you enjoy the lesson and I'll see you next time.